Just want to check in with you on the uh, Julio Jones situation. Have you all talked to, uh, and is there a possible reconciliation uh, in this situation? I'll do that. Like any private conversation I have with our players is going to remain private on my end. And I'm not going to sit here and comment on any potential roster moves we may or may not make. Coach, um, well, the um, any reaction to his comment yesterday that he's out of here? Look, we encourage our players to they should speak for themselves. And so I'm not going to comment. It doesn't change anything for us. I mean, we understand what our plan is moving forward. And we have, like I said, we have multiple private conversations with our players. And those are conversations that are going to remain private on my end. Jeff Schultz. Arthur, do you have any uh, thoughts about one of your best players walking down the sidewalk with the Dallas Cowboys hoodie on? Jeff, again, I, I don't speculate on stuff like that. I, I don't even know really what you're talking about. So, do you do you think, given all that's happened, that this is a a fixable situation? I mean, could you still foresee a scenario that, with everything that's happened, that Julio Jones could still play for you? Jeff, just kind of like I told D. Led, we had multiple private conversations with our players and I remain private, and I'm not going to publicly comment on any potential roster moves. Terry and I talk multiple times a day about the roster. It's pretty common. People talk all the time, other other teams, general managers, kind of how business is done. But I'm not going to comment publicly on any potential moves. Mike Ross team. Yeah. Hey, Arthur, you, you said you have a plan going forward. Is Julio part of that plan? Michael, any time you're in this business, you're going to have, have multiple plans. We understand what our cap situation is, and we got multiple plans before we get into training camp, how we're going to get under. Right, but – I mean, so do you, are there plans that exist then that don't have Julio in the fold? Well, I'm not going to comment, again, on these private conversations we have. But any potential, we have multiple plans, and there are multiple options for us to get under the cap by the time we hit the training camp. Paul Newberry. Paul Newberry. Call about that. So, yeah, sorry, I got to get up, get unmuted there. Um, I know you said, uh, I, I guess you're not going to talk about Julio, but um, does where would not having him leave your uh, wide receiver position? Obviously, you've you've made a signing today, um, announced a signing today. Can you any just any comment on that position uh, with him in or not in it? Look, we've been very active in moving or making transactions with our roster. Any move we do is, is to get the best 90 guys as we can get into camp and create competition around here. So that's that's what all those roster moves have been that way since Terry and I got here. This, uh, I, I like you said, you you look at your roster construction and you've looked at di multiple plans. Uh, what does is, um, is there any way you could comment without having a guy that's been such a uh, a big part of that the last uh, decade? Um, what can you could do at that position if he's not available? We've got so much respect, appreciation, what Julio Jones, Jones has done here for this franchise and what he's been to the city. But like I, like I said earlier, look, we have conversations about our roster all the time. There's things that happen. You have to have contingency plans. There's so many things that happen during the NFL season, whether you're dealing with transactions, you're dealing with injuries. you got to have multiple plans to go play a 17-game season. And we're trying to get the best guys on this roster. Do we have great competition going into camp? Kelsey Conway. Hey, Coach. Um, what are your OTAs going to look like, and what are you hoping to accomplish in this block of OTAs? Yeah, so we, we've got the majority of our guys here. We're excited. It was the first team meeting I've had in person, and these guys are excited to get, get out on the field and get to work. And as we get into this offseason, this voluntary offseason program, and it's all about teaching and develop. So we're excited as we build this thing going, and as it, our objective is to be in the best shape we can be getting into training camp. We understand it's a long process. We're excited about the first day of OTAs. And then in the receiver group, um, I know you are just talking about it a little bit, but uh, what have been your impressions? I know it's been a short period of time on the field, but of players like Russell Gage and obviously Calvin. Yeah, I mean, we're excited about Russell and Calvin. Uh, we're excited what they did last year and what the potential is moving forward. But like I said, the, the more competition we get at every spot, the better off we're going to be in the long run. Tori McElhaney. Yeah, Coach, did Julio ask for a trade before the draft? Again, 
toward I, I'm not going to kind of my door is always open, my phone's always on, and there's a, a level of trust you, that we want to build here with the players. All the players know that. But again, on my end, we have private conversations. Those are private, and I'm going to keep it that way from my end. Yeah, it, it, from, I know you're talking about you know having team meetings, the voluntary stuff. But has Julio been sent a, a playbook or anything, or, or, or breaking down a schedule of, of what y'all are doing this off season? Everybody that's on this roster, everything has been communicated to them. Uh, every team that I've been a part of, you have multiple ways to communicate. There's nothing really there, no. But all all 90 guys on our roster, they know that they get communicated to. Justin Felder. I certainly respect keeping private conversations private and not wanting to go into detail, but what would the message to fans be about the potential of a, a franchise player, many of their favorite player, uh, saying he doesn't want to be here? What would the message to fans be about, you know, their future for a, a guy many of them have watched for a long time? Again, we have great appreciation and respect for, for Julio, what he's done here, and for all the players that have been a part of this Falcons organization. Look, Justin, it's a tough business. We all signed up for players and coaches. We understand that. But everything we do here is going to be well thought out, and it's going to be handled behind the scenes with dignity with the players. And that'll be this – as long as I'm here, that's the way it'll be done. So, again, we understand the business that we're in. But every player here is treated with dignity. And – what you just said, of handling it behind the scenes and with dignity, you guys really hadn't said any, you know, really talked about this much. Julio hadn't talked about this much up until a, a, a yesterday. Is there any disappointment on your end that has now kind of come out into the public the way it has? Look, as I said earlier, we encourage our guys. They should speak for themselves. I think that's the way it should be. So anytime a player wants to speak for himself, and that's anybody on this roster, they should. So that doesn't change anything. Zach Klein? Coach, you said it's a tough business and you're a tough spot, but you're the head coach of this team. I just find it really hard to believe that you said you don't speculate and don't know what we're talking about when you see arguably the best receiver in the game wearing a Dallas Cowboys jersey. How does the head coach of the Falcons not know one of his best players wearing another team's jersey or sweatshirt? And I, I collect news. I love to read news. I didn't see it. Got him out on social media. So, again, you're going to have to maybe somebody, maybe Jeff can, can text it to me, snapshot. So... It, it, it's irrelevant. I don't, I don't like wear whatever you want. It doesn't. I don't so care. So Pat Ryan wears a Saints jersey. That's irrelevant. Again, the players can speak for themselves. Zach, you can wear whatever. You got a multiple jerseys back there. What do you got back there? You got a Braves jersey. You got the University of Georgia. I have a Ryan like, jersey. You're, you're all landed out. But I mean, if you go in there and you want to wear a Patriots jersey, good, good for you, Zach. Uh, and finally, if I were to talk to you in a month, um, how do you define a successful OTA? Uh, we're just trying, we're in the teach and developing stage right here. So we're trying to put our systems in here and this is the next step. We've been meeting virtually. So our objective is to go out there and assess and see where we're at mentally and, and checking our alignments and our assignments as we build this thing. It's a building phase as we're trying to get these guys ready to go for training camp. Michael Cunningham. You're still muted, Mike. All right, move on. Steve Weiss. Oh, there you go, Mike. No question. Go ahead. Steve Weiss. Hey, Arthur, in, in, in handling all of this, you, know, you talked about you want to be around players, you know, who want to be here. So what is the message, like, when you take the field today with these guys, when they're out there, about the guys who want to be there and, and pushing them, but then also maybe trying to keep the conversation away from a star player who says he doesn't want to be there. You know, we go back there. We're excited about the guys that are here. This is a voluntary program, and that's, and that's the way it should be, and that's what was bargained, you know, collectively bargained on. And so we're just – the guys that are out here, we're, we're trying to take what we've done virtually, and it's just a building block to step, go out here and learn. But, look, we got some really good veterans here. And guys have different ways to get themselves ready, ready to roll. So as long as they're ready to roll by training camp, that's really all that matters. Okay, great. I'm, I'm good. Diana Rossini. Steve's a smart guy. He took some of my question there, Coach. But that being said, I actually I just want to add to it. Arthur, you're doing this all for the first time as a head coach. Now you have a – your star player doesn't want to be there – you have in-person meetings for the first time. 
you referenced your messaging. What actually has been your message to the team yesterday when you finally actually got to talk to them in person? Well, we had our first in-person today. Uh, we did a still our virtual yesterday. Today will be our first OTA. Uh, the message has been pretty clear as we're trying to build this, you know, and really what I was, my message to the team is what our objective is. So when you go out in OTAs, a lot of people, we're not really concerned about the other 31 teams. Uh, our players know exactly what to expect out there. Like I said, this is a teach and developing stage for us. And these guys are excited. We got the majority of our guys here and they're excited and we'll, we'll always coach the guys that show up. Maria Martin. Coach, you've said in the past that the mentality of this franchise is to win now and you guys want to win now. So how frustrating is it for you when you hear a guy like Julio Jones, a veteran and a face of this franchise, basically insinuate that he can't win in Atlanta? Look, I respect everybody's opinion. We all have opinions. Like, I expect everybody, they can wear what they want to wear. Say what you want to say. I mean, that's that's fine. That's healthy. Um, but, look, I, I don't think it's really earth-shattering when you get a headline, a pro football coach expects to win. I mean, I think every guy coaching in the NFL expects to win. I don't think that's a really uh, big headline there. And then, as far as Calvin Ridley is concerned, in the conversations that you've had with him, how confident are you that he could be a leader in that wide receiver room? Look, leadership comes in all shapes and sizes. Uh, you know, I don't sit here and try to get these guys to be cookie cutter and say, hey, you got to act a certain way. We like these guys to be themselves. And guys can lead in their own ways. And usually the more productive guys, guys gravitate towards. And we're excited about Calvin and the potential that, that he brings to our football team this season. Mike Giardi. Mike, to nature, Batiste. Good morning, Coach. Morning. Uh, last week, Matt Ryan said that you hold your play best players accountable, and I know you're okay with players speaking out, but with a vet and a best player like Julio making comments like he did yesterday and in your first year where he's part of you know setting the tone here, will there be accountability for him if Julio does remain with the Falcons? Look, anything we talk about privately is going to remain private behind the scenes, and that's for every player. Look, really excited about these guys that are here today that we're getting ready to go out in the field and work with. There's always something that's going to come up, and that's part of the job description. You know, you know what you signed up for. You don't like problems, stay out of leadership. But uh, we're excited about the guys that are here, everybody that will be here in training camp. And so we'll deal with that with anything that comes up. Every day there's going to be something. So we're excited, and we'll, we'll deal with it as it comes my way. Thanks, Coach. Thanks. We've got time for, for a few follow-ups. Dila, do you have one? Uh, yeah, Coach. I just want to know, is this situation reconcilable? Dila, I'm not going to speculate. Again, I'm not going to comment on any potential issues with the roster moving forward. And like I, I continue to say, you know, our conversations that I have with the players remain private from my end. Is that a yes or a no? That's a, I'm not going to comment on any okay. conversation I have with the player that, that's private on my end. All right. Mike Rothstein, you have one? I, you're, you're, you're muted. I can hear you out there, though, Mike. Kind of screaming. There you the, go. Uh, Sorry about class. that. I'm using my phone. Uh, I just want to kind of get more clarity on what Tori asked about the playbook. Has Julio Jones been given a playbook or not? Look, guys. We, everything that today's age, it's all virtual. These guys have multiple ways to get, we communicate. I think just about probably every other team and in, in the NFL, major college football, everything is available to our players on the roster. So that includes the playbook, that includes game plan, whatever, whatever he is, whatever you are giving everybody else, you are also giving Julio. It's pretty, pretty cut and dry here. Everybody that's on this roster has access to everything we give out to players. We don't, no games being played there, Mike. Sorry, Mac. Well, Haney, you have one? No, nope, I'm good. Thank you. Paul Newberry. Uh, one more thing I want. Is there any, uh, more of a general with this situation swirling around, is there any concern about what impact it has on the rest of the guys and, and what you're trying to do just here with OTAs? I know you'd like to get this off to a, 
a good positive start. Is there, uh, you know, any concern with this hanging over as you go out on the field with the guys you have today? No. All right, we got time for one last one, Jeff Schultz. Arthur, I'm just wondering beyond Julio, are any other veterans not participating in OTAs? Jeff, this, like I said, this is voluntary. We got the majority of our guys here. We're excited. Things are going to come up. Life happens this kind of time of year. And so, but we, we got the majority of our players here, and we're excited about getting ready to get out on the field and work with them today. So, I'm sorry, when you say the majority of the players are there, does that mean all of the other players are there except for Julio or any others missing? Majority of our guys, I guess. Are you here today? You could, you could probably go out there and I'm see not here. I'm not here. I'm not. It's voluntary for me, too. No. Uh, nice. So, let me get Tori to fill you in.